<laughs> a lot of gear for two days of fishing. I'm so excited. <laughs> Never been on a float plane before. This is gonna be fun and <laughs> way smaller than I thought. Hey, Jill. Definitely, yeah, a little, little nervous and excited. It's definitely windy and kind of stormy today. It's all about the adventure, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully we land <laughs> on the water, right side up. <laughs> About the Redford? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you guys all set? Arriving at the lodge, it's just stunning and there's not really anything else around here. So you drive in and it's these beautiful rustic cabins on this beautiful landing and the colours and the scenery are just stunning. You can't really match it to anything else. There's not really anywhere else I've been that really looks like this. It feels like you're stepping back, you know, 50, 60, 70 years into BC's history and you know, it feels very wild and untouched, and that's kind of what you're getting here. Good morning. How are you? We are kind of at the edge. Most maps don't, it's not on it with most maps. And, uh, it's in the Nechaco Reservoir. So we're at the very western end of Tedichuk Lake and we're on the opposite side from Tweedsmere Park and we're situated just right across from one of BC's kind of most remote and I think one of the largest parks that they have here. About to head out, go check out the river. Oh, we are ready, so ready. And we're off. We really didn't know what we were getting into. There's hardly any information about this place at all. It's it's really off the grid. Long boat ride in or a 45 minute flight from Burns Lake. So it, it really isn't an area that has been explored too much or fished. There's so many different factors coming into play and going in with no knowledge is as exciting as it is a little intimidating just for the whole are we going to find results? Are we going to be able to figure it out in our short time frame? And once we kind of got up into the rapid and we finally got landed, it was really like, let's start game on. Oh, oh did you see that fish jump? Oh. On the other side, it was enormous. What that was the biggest splash.
There we go. Well, that's a nice one. That's a nice fish. Get in there. Woohoo! Oh, look at him. Look at him. Oh my gosh. This fish is beautiful. Having a place like this where you're encountering fish that literally have never seen a surface fly before ever in their lives is something that is kind of hard to comprehend. It's a little bit intangible as an angler close to urban areas. Going up into that river system, it's its own unique little system up there and it, it looks like nowhere else I've ever fished in British Columbia. I've never caught a rainbow on a mouse pattern. And I had one in my box. And it didn't take very long. Oh, on a mouse! Oh my god! <laughs> wow! That's a beautiful fish. Wow. You know, you're getting very aggressive surface takes, you're getting fish that are chasing and boiling on dry flies. Very acrobatic, out of the water immediately, and these fish didn't fail, kind of that characteristic. The fish are so aggressive here. It's 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 truly what you know what a lot of BC would probably be like maybe a hundred years ago, and somewhere that's virtually untouched and unfished and no fishing pressure at all. The fish are every single one of them are just perfect. I mean the fact that the closest neighbors are that 100 kilometers away and just the vastness of this area, but also you are so far removed from anything that you may have experienced before. This is the best place in the world. We were talking about this on the way up, what our bucket list trip would be. And mine was Alaska, fishing for big rainbows, doing exactly this. And I'm in my home province. You know, you're here in a day. This is the best place. I need a I need to come back. <laughs> Unreal. Unbelievable.